and the first chapter of the bhagavad gita is more of setting the stage for the discussion so we will go a little faster and once we come to the philosophy and the wisdom we'll go slower so the bhagavad gita is a text with 18 chapters in it and uh, it has 700 texts which are often called as verses the word the bhagavad gita itself the name refers to gita is song bhagavat is god or divinity so the divine song the song of god these are some of the english translations of this words and it's a eastern philosophical classic it discusses yoga karma bhakti destiny identity ultimately it discusses the what might be the most important question of life you know what makes life meaningful that what is it that we can do so that our life is lived most meaningfully especially when we are faced with difficult situations in our life and its first chapter is largely putting the setting where this conversation is happening so there are 46 verses in the first chapter and these are actually about as i said the there is the context and then there is the text so the context is largely put in chapter 1 and then the actual text goes over the next 17 chapters from chapter 2 to chapter 18 and here the gita is put as a conversation within a conversation so the core conversation is between krishna and arjuna and we'll talk about these two characters in due course but krishna refers to the divine the divinity who descended to the world arjuna refers to the human being he could say the he represents all of us and beyond that there is a bigger conversation which is between a king dhritarashtra and sanjay so this first verse is being spoken by dhritarashtra to sanjay and gita's context is that it is spoken just before a climactic war the gita is a part of a much bigger book called the mahabharat and the mahabharat is considered to be one of the longest poems in the world history it has 110000 verses which is bigger than the iliad and the odyssey combined together and multiplied by seven times and within that it is one of the middle books the sixth book which is uh, called in that it is a certain set of 18 chapters is what this book is all about and so in this book in the mahabharat there are two sides they are cousins they are called the pandavas who are broadly the virtuous side and the kauravas who are the vicious side and they are having a climactic battle in a place called kurukshetra and the kauravas their father is dhritarashtra and he is having this discussion with his assistant sanjay so the gita begins with that point and that's why the first verse is that dhritarashtra is talking with sanjay now the war itself is having at a place apne at a place called kurukshetra and these places are not important but the broader context is and so this is where the krishna arjuna discussion is going to happen there is another place which is the capital of the city it's called Hast- the capital of the kingdom hastinapur 
and that is where Dhritarashtra and Sanjay they are having their discussion. So war were more like sporting contests. Contest. So war was not involved involving civilians. That's why it was decided at this particular place we will fight. While the two armies are assembled, in the, the first text, the question that is being asked by the Trash to Sanjay, it's you know, you could each text you could put into four parts. There are four lines. And sometimes it's helpful to analyze a text in terms of what it is saying. So Dharma Kshetra Kurukshetra. So at Kurukshetra. So which is the place of virtue. The word dharma is quite critical in the Bhagavad Gita. It will come on many occasions. But let's uh, And it can be translated in different ways. But at this point, its translation is broadly virtue, the place of virtue, of piety, of sanctity. Dharma Kshetra Kurukshetra Samaveta Yudsava. So assembled to fight. So I'm doing an approximate translation over here just to get us a, use a sense of what is happening. So the place is described in the first line and then the activity, you could say more of the intended activity that's described in the second line. Mamakaha Pandavas Chaiva. He says, this is my sons versus the Pandavas. They are assembled. So you could say that here, the if you consider a movie, the protagonists, who are the characters involved, that's described. Kim Akurvata Sanjaya. What did they do? So there's an actual activity. So there was, they, they assembled to fight, but what did they actually do? That's the question. So it's an interesting okay. setup over here. At one level, the question, the last verse is a question. The question can seem either redundant, that, okay, they assembled to fight and what did they do? It's like somebody assembled in a party uh, to dance and what did they do? Somebody came, sat down on a, uh, to eat a feast, and what did they do? So it can seem either completely redundant. What's the point of asking the question? So, so is it redundant over here? So this first question, while it is largely about the context, it also contains a indication towards the text. So the idea is that if somebody is asking a redundant question, so when they all sat down to eat, what happened? So what happened? What did they do? So now the question could mean that there is some unknown or unpredictable factor involved. Just to give a maybe a little graphic example. Suppose in this party where everybody's sitting to have a feast, maybe there is a time bomb that is kept over there and that's going to explode. Then did it explode? What happened? So that now the question is not exactly did the time bomb explode? What actually happened over there? So there is when there is an obvious, when there is a question with an obvious answer that suggests that there is something more going on over there. Either the person is foolish to ask that question or there is something more over there. So it's foreshadowing in a very indirect way. And the foreshadowing word here is dharma. So dharma is virtue and it's interesting that this is called a place of virtue. So the idea is that Every place can have its own influence. You know, suppose two people go to a very 
scenic hill station and there they are they are going to have some very uh, heavy duty high octane confrontation negotiation hmm? maybe say america and uh, uh, russia have a go to camp david and they want to have some discussion or somewhere like that and if it's a very scenic peaceful place then if there's a confrontation in a peaceful place then or confrontational discussion in a very peaceful place and the question might come up okay did the peaceful place have some effect did just being in that serene natural environment cool the temperatures of the people did they decide that maybe we shouldn't be fighting so like that the point over here is dharma the place of dharma the word is dharma kshetra the place of dharma did this have an effect and if yes it had an effect what was the effect so they came to fight but did they actually fight or did they have some rethinking about it and this is where the gita uh, actually addresses a very important ethical question about war mm -hmm. and this will be a consistent theme in the first chapter but when a war is about to happen and wars can be brutal so generally it's best if wars can be avoided if issues can be resolved peacefully so the question here is that there is one side which is virtuous hmm? and there is one side which is vicious and the place of dharma is going to affect both of them or is it going to affect either of them so the vicious side could decide that maybe their wise decreases and they say maybe, maybe now let's not fight hmm? if their animosity that might, they might think let's not fight or it could also happen that the virtuous people maybe they are affected by the place of dharma now if it's a virtuous fight how my if virtuous people are there how might they be affected their intention might increase you no know, virtue is on our side we will win so let's fight or it could be that is this really worth fighting for is 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 all this bloodshed and violence is really worth it that kind of question could also come in them so the point is that here the whole idea is in that particular place that dharma how did it affect them kim akurvata what did they do did they go along with the predicted plan of fighting or was there some unexpected effect and if that was expected unexpected effect was there what was that effect so the virtues their confidence could increase or you could say their so much like their hesitation or their reservation that could increase mm -hmm. or for the wishes that could be like a deterrence so any of these could happen and um, that's the question that is being raised over here and the subsequent verses will describe how who was affected by the events over there and uh, that's why this whole series the first verse it's it's pregnant with a lot of symbolism there is a explicit wording of the verse but there is an implicit message within that and as i said the dharma the word dharma dharma is sometimes translated as religion sometimes it's translated as virtue 
But dharma is also translated as, in this concept, the right thing to do, the responsible thing to do. And the whole Gita, which will be spoken over there, is about how to determine the right thing to do. Here, right, right thing to do is discussed not so much in a moral sense. The morality is definitely there, but it's more a sense of meaning. What is the most meaningful thing to do in life when we are faced with difficulties? So we discuss broadly three points. We discuss broadly the intro to the text, that it has 18 chapters, 700 verses. It's a part of the Mahabharat. And then we discussed also the setting of what is being spoken over there. And then we discussed the, the, the impl implicit question, the unasked question and the asked question that the implicit question points to some unpredictable factor. That is, what did they do after they assembled for the battlefield? Uh, uh, assembled to fight? The unpredictable factor, the wild card. That is, the place of virtue, the place of dharma. What did, how did it have an effect? And then we discuss the possible effects on those who are virtuous. Their confidence might be increased or their... You could say that their, their hesitation might increase. And for the vicious, maybe the deterrence might increase among them. So how it affected either of them, that's what will be described in the subsequent verses. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna.